So our character is going to end up down into this position here. And then we've got the thrusting up action where the character is going to push themselves up into the air. So this can be taken, you can do this in one of two different ways. All right, and I'll let you choose which way you want to do it. When your character comes down to this position, you can either have the legs driving the action, they are the primary force, or you can make it the shoulders and chest and arms are doing the primary action and the legs come secondary, right? which will cause different parts of the body to react in different ways. So if you're going to come from this position here and make the legs your primary motivator, the legs have to move first. The legs would start to move up first and then you get an overlapping action. So if we go to our primary key now, right after this one, we probably plant the feet hard down, get the legs going straight up in the air like this, So here's our thrusting action up like this, but if that's the primary part, then the upper body is now secondary. And so therefore, what we do is something like this. We bend the body over this way, so now the head is continuing down and forward while the hips are moving up. And so we've got an S-curve taking place here, which is another form of seaweed that's going to cause it to overlap. So my head's going to come down here like this. Into that position there. And then I've got to figure out what are my arms going to do. Okay. So if I'm going forward like this, most likely what will happen is my arms will do a seaweed action as well, something along the lines of this. Where the hands will continue to go, go up in this direction here, the shoulder will drop down, and the elbow is basically the pivoting point. So on the opposite side, I have to mirror that, my hand over there like that. Okay. So now the thrust is taking place in the legs, but all this other stuff is overlapping, and now I've got to get it to catch up with everything else. So from this position here, the thrusting is taking place in my hips, it's going up like this. Now my body's going to drag So what's this look like? It was the third assignment that you did in first year, the first semester. No, not the seaweed. No. The double ball with the tail. The body is now the tail. See this action right here? There's your primary ball right there. Primary ball right there. There's your tail. Remember that action? It's exactly the same. Right? So in this case here, this action is taking place like this. What's going to happen now is this part of the arm here is going to snap down like this and trail behind as the body's coming up. And the feet are going to be pointed straight down like this. So then your character has to reach the high point, which we're getting into descending energy at the high point there. So it's going to slow into this high point here. And then we've got to get the body to catch up. So this is the tail again, overlapping. Now we've got to start to bring the body down.
and then hit the ground. Now it's best if I go back to my primary <coughs> key here to make sure that I'm contacting the feet in the exact same position that I want them to be in. So I've got to get them to contact at that point right there. So you can see in this drawing previous, my line of action there is slightly off. So I'd have to readjust that drawing right there in order to get it so that that foot contacts right at the proper point there. I need to cushion and impact, so this is like my squash position, where my feet slap onto the ground, and I buckle the knees, and get the butt down here. <coughs> Remember the tail? Tail dragging while this part here squishes. Okay. So now I've got to recover out of this. So what I can do is I can do a couple of different things here. I can start to bring the legs back up and start to buckle the body over and get it to overlap and then come back up again. Or what I could do is I could cushion this even more. Remember we had that favor in there before? So if I buckle the knees even more to get that big impact down here, the full squish position, then what I could do is I could start to overlap the body here. And then start to bring the legs back up again. So my butt now is going to come back up to here. and I overlap the body now, but keep the head dragging forward this way. It's pretty wicked action, actually. And get those arms to flip. I'm making the character very, very loopy here, just to show you the exaggeration that you can do. And bring him up to his high point. Straighten the legs back up again. But snap his body over. cushion again, but not as much this time. I'm just going to buckle the knees a little bit here. And start to bring the body back up again. down just slightly more so I've got a little bit of a favor cushion there. So that's actually my extreme down position now. Let's start to swing the hands back. arm would go the opposite way here. Then we get the character back up to the high point on the knees and hips. 
I know I'm losing my registration on the bottom because I'm just very lightly sketching those in and my character is probably also shrinking so I'm going to have to go back and double check all that stuff. So now I'm getting to this position here. I'm going to reverse the direction on my hips. See the S curve running through here. The arms are swinging back, pendulum style. That one I wouldn't see because it would be behind. And then just one more slight little cushion on the knees. To drop the hips down just slightly. And bring the head forward and down a little bit and get the shoulders to reverse direction. I'm doing the seaweed action on the arm there. And then back up to the high point. <coughs> and I've got a match back up to this position here, so you can see how my character shifted. So I'm going to have to go back and correct all those. But like I said, I'm just sort of plowing through for the sake of getting the overall action down. And now my arm is going to reverse direction and pendulum forward here. And then everything else stops. So I trace back everything except for the arms. and get them to settle forward and then one more drawing to get them to reverse the curve and settle back into their final position. and then it comes back and then I'm going to end up back into that pose there as the very final pose. So there's a huge shift there which I still have to correct. But now let's take a look at our, all the overall keys. Let's see what the action looks like. The character starts here. Okay, so that's kind of a neat loopy type of a, an action. Okay, so that's leading with the hips, right? The hips are my primary motivator. The rest of the body is just following. Okay. And basically it's doing essentially what happened in the double ball bounce with the tail. Um, are we allowed to uh, scratch and stretch or are yep. we maintaining volume? Well, you have to maintain volume. But, like, we can but you can do squash and stretch, yeah, but it's got to maintain the volume, okay. right? So just like with the ball, Remember when we squish the ball, you have to stretch it out on the side. If you're going to squish this way, the volume has to go somewhere, right? You can't just shrink the character, right? So I'm okay with stretching and squashing. That's perfectly okay. okay. All right, so that's one way of doing it. Now I'm going to show you the alternate way. <coughs> 